special educator and presently i'm pursuing masters in special education and uh, my specialization is in learning disabilities and without further delay as mom said let's continue with the session and i'm very much excited to share my knowledge about vernal method which i widely which i mostly used with children having learning disability and even it can be also used with children uh, who are not having any kind of disabilities and it's a most effective method and it will definitely um, show you the positive result if you are dealing with children yeah if you want to read if you want to teach reading spellings and writing to your kids so just give me a second to share my screen and then we will proceed and if you would be having any doubts you can definitely note down in the chat box i will cater to it Okay, so just let me know the screen is visible to everyone. Yes, Tanya, it's visible. Okay, that's wonderful. So, experiment reading with the Fernand method. So, when we talk about the reading part, we all know reading plays a very important role. And yes, when we are talking about children having learning disability, and there are many types of learning disability which include dyslexia, dyscalculia, dysgraphia, dyspraxia, and many others, right? When we talk about dyslexia, so the student with learning disability having dyslexia, specific learning disability named as dyslexia, they have reading issues. It means that they are not able to recognize the phonic sounds or they are not able to recognize the words. They have issues in fluency and other components, other elements of reading. So this is one particular amazing method which helps the child to read using a fun way, using a fun way procedure. Okay, we will also be doing some activity. One activity I will be doing with you all so that you get to know the insight that how we have to use this method with our kids. Okay, so let's start. Yeah, now this is a multimodal approach which is used to teach reading to learning disabled child and even it can be used with the general candidate also with general students so circumvents the futility of deciding whether to teach to the child's strengths or weaknesses yes so when we talk about students now basically when we are dealing with students having learning disability we focus on their strengths and weaknesses okay so being a child uh, being a child counselor or a special educator or a therapist or a play therapist we have to focus on the child's strengths and weaknesses right so this method helps us in finding out that what are the weaknesses of a child and what are the strengths and accordingly we carry forward with the teaching procedure so this is a multimodal approach which allow us to identify the strength of our child and we can use that particular strength so that we can help him like using his strength we can help him in help the child in improving in his reading or improving his the area in which he is weak in which he needs help in which which is the uh, particular concern area okay so now when we talk about the final method this method is introduced by uh, Grace Fernald in 1943 and he, she developed an approach for the reading that uses visual, auditory, kinesthetic and tactile senses. So basically you might have about VAKT approach, right? Visual, auditory, kinesthetic and tactile. This method is also known as VAKT approach. But when I have used this particular method with kids, with children, I observed VAKT other than VAKT this method involves a certain depth, okay, that we are going to study further in the further coming slides, okay. So, and yes, you might have also heard about other multisensory programs like Orton Dilligham and other uh, multisensory approaches you might have heard about. So, this particular method is completely different from that one, okay, because those methods focus only on the whole word process. But this particular me method focus or focuses on the sound, focuses on the each and every component of that word, and hel it helps the child to understand the reading from the base level. Okay, 
so this is also known as this method is also known as vkt as i have told you before visual auditory kinesthetic uh, tactile or it is also known as tracing method okay now for this particular technique now when we start following this technique when we start doing this uh, fanal method with children sometimes uh, like when uh, i was in the job profile i was working with teachers and other special educators we observed that this method was useful was um, i mean it was very much effective for some children but it was not effective effective for some children okay why because it requires we all know there are individual needs right some children like when we you when we start using this particular method we start using different senses uh, we start using different like kinesthetic visual auditory so we have to understand the needs of the child first and then we have to put into this particular method like in this particular method if i am giving a uh, tracing using with the help of a clay okay but the child who is not interested in clay that particular child is interested in sand so i have to change that method for that particular child so understand the needs of the child and then apply that same knowledge on the particular child or uh, you, the case you are dealing with okay so when i was dealing uh, i was using this method many teachers gave me the feedback that uh, ma'am this method i am not finding it effective let's try on another method okay and then uh, with that research and with that again uh, group method with that um, yeah uh, i think you are not able to see it i know because i have just switched, switched off the slide and i'm just speaking and i'm not showing the slide right now okay so i mean to say that first understand the needs first understand the strengths as you might have aware of the it also in it that is individualized education program first we find out what are the strengths and weaknesses and accordingly we use particular method with our children okay one second now i think you will be able to see the slide okay so for this technique to be successful it is very important to know the method thoroughly yes it is very much necessary there are basic steps and if we will miss one step of this method we will not be able to carry forward with the other step when we are dealing with children so it is very important that we are using one step very slowly and gradually with the child we are recording the progress and then we are moving ahead if we find that in first step my child has not shown me the expected result according to his needs and everything was right then i cannot move to the next step first i have to just focus on the that particular step on which i didn't got the expected results okay so that's the reason also that we don't get successful results if we keep on moving to each and every step in a uh, in a speed okay we are not just to have we are not having that patience or we are not just uh, focusing that is the child able to do it properly or not is the child getting anxious in that method or not so we have to observe all the behaviors how the child is reacting how the child is behaving what are the progress reports how much the child is enjoying each and every step we have to take it very slowly when we are dealing with students having learning disability okay and again it also requires to be open minded to be possibility that some children can learn with this technique and can be benefited but some children they may they might require more adjustments and modifications okay like uh, even um, in the coming slides i will introduce with the sand tray with the sand play okay now sometimes it happens the texture of the sand is also not so smooth and the child is not feeling comfortable in using that particular sand so i cannot force the child to use the sand only beta we can't do anything i can't adjust another sand no we can't say we can't expect the child to adjust with us okay we have to adjust the resources and we have to adapt to this uh, particular technique so that our child can learn okay and it is necessary for the clinician or for the therapist to know about the various variations otherwise modifications cannot be made now when we talk about the variations when i will be explaining about the steps of this particular method 
then i will be also talking about the variations we have to we can use okay and we should be also aware about some of the reinforcement techniques now we all know about, about like you might be aware about the reinforcement that reinforcement can be negative and it can be positive okay but in this uh, considering this particular technique i am talking about the positive reinforcement okay so in each and every step when we observe that the child is performing very nicely and we are getting that expected results even if we are not getting expected results but we observe that the child is putting his or her effort we have to give positive reinforcement okay why because it will help the child to retain those particular words to read that particular content nicely in the coming sessions and more effectively they will start enjoying the sessions with you using this particular method when we will start using reinforcement techniques into it okay and until and unless this particular funnel technique funnel method is not complete when we are not completing our particular stage properly and we if we are not getting that effective results in that step one we can't proceed further we can't move further with the next steps okay now for conducting this particular technique for using this method you need some papers pens sketch pens you need thread you need sand tray you need paints and colors okay now for doing this i will be showing you a video and in between the video i will be telling you about all the variations i will be telling you about the steps you can use and how you can uh, mold the steps you can modify the steps according to the needs of the child okay and after showing you the demonstration i request you all to be ready with this these uh, all the materials and i want you uh, all to perform this particular activity on yourself okay so are you all ready i can give you 2 minutes to arrange these materials and if you are not having any of the materials that's perfectly fine you can just store it in your memory and you can or you can even definitely note it down so that whenever you are using this funnel method with kids you should be aware of each and every point okay so i'm just giving you 2 minutes you can just grab all your objects all your materials let me show you the list of materials once again um and i will show you the demonstration part wait is the slide visible yes so you need papers it can be any paper and if it if it is a white color that much better and then you need pen thread sand tray and if you are having sand that's that's wonderful you need paints and colors okay okay you want me to speak in hindi also sure i will ma'am can you repeat the slide again yes ma'am okay so when we are talking about this method jab hum is method ke bare mein baat kar rahe hain ye basically use hota hai for teaching reading to kids to children okay and is method ko use karne ke liye aapko ye ye saman sara chahiye and i am going to show you main aapko ek video dikhaungi in which i will tell you how you have to use this method with your children with kids and then i will also tell you ki aap is method ko thoda badal kaise sakte hain according to the needs of your child okay should i start with the demonstration part yes yes ma'am okay so first of all now what happens is um uh, before conducting any technique before interacting with any child but chicke sath interact karne se pehle it is very important first we uh, build a rapport okay so that the child is able to connect with us so that the child is able to feel comfortable in that particular environment and then what you can do um yahan pe hum sabse pehle ab dekhe ya to you can select any word okay now again it depends upon the grade level like if you're dealing with adolescence if you're dealing with uh, a child who is in 11th grade okay so you can take a bigger word you can take according to his grade level okay but if you're dealing with a child who is in third so you can again definitely change that word okay and if the child is having learning disability so here i have selected a word which is of third grade so either you can ask the child 
Okay, so we are going to do one activity. Can you give me, can you share any word which you want to learn today or which you want to, uh, you want to perform the activity with me? So either if the child is comfortable in sharing his word, that's fine. If not, then you can select a word for the child. Okay, so here I have selected the word hand. Okay, and when I will select the word, I will tell to the child, hey, so today we are going to do an activity and that activity is on the word about the word hand. Okay, now I have to pronounce the word of that in front of him and it should be in a very clear tone, clear language. Okay, so that he could understand, he could observe my lip sync, he could, he could hear the sounds of each and every letter that I'm pronouncing up clearly. Okay, and when I will speak it out, I will then write, then again speak. And in this entire procedure, the child will observe me carefully. And you can obviously give the instruction, this particular instruction to the child also. Okay, like if the name of the child is Krishna. Krishna, I'm going to write down a word. You have to observe. You have to hear the sounds carefully. Okay, then I will start writing it down. And in this entire procedure, the child will observe. And will I will also speak the word and the child will also speak the word after me. So first I have to write the entire word. The instructor, has, the teacher has to write the entire word and then I will say hand. Then child will also say hand. Okay, this is the first step. Then after this, the teacher traces the letter and says the sound of letters simultaneously. Like if I'm tracing H, I will say H. When I'm tracing A, I will say A. It means I have to say the sound of each letter also along with tracing. Okay, and then here again the role of the child. What the child is doing? The child is just observing and listening to me carefully, clearly. Okay. Her, a, no, do. Okay. So this is done by the teacher first. And then we will say the child, would you like to do? I will be very happy if you will do it in front of me or if you will do it for me. And then we have to say to the child to perform the same procedure. He will just uh, trace the letter and he will take out the sound. Okay. And yes, after this. Now, this was the first, um, I mean, the first component of tracing, which means the tracing with fingers on the written content. Okay. The second step, you should be ready with the, any raised paper, okay, or any thread so that you can paste it along with the child or you, if you are already, if you have already planned a word, so you should be ready with this particular method, this particular flashcard on which the letters, the letter of that word is little raised using, you can either put a beads on it or you can put any, uh, thread on it. Okay, and then we will take out the sound. I will take out the sound of each letter and I will start tracing this particular thread. Okay, and then after when I will complete the child has to follow the same procedure. Now why we are using this technique again? Why we, I have said you to use this component for tracing? Because according to Grace Fernald, some children are having sensory issues. Okay, and some children, they are not able to feel the texture of the paper. So for this, we just try to modify, we just try to change the texture so that the child and in this particular step, we can even blindfold the child. Okay, it can be a playway game. Like I can give the certain set of words which are just encrypted and just raised like this. Okay, and then I can just blindfold the child and I can say to the child to just put your finger, move your fingers on the sheet, on the thread and tell me what you felt and which word is written on the sheet of paper. This also becomes really interesting. You can also take it turn by turn that once you are doing and then child is doing this activity and then you can also make the scores that, oh, I have got only one out of 10 and you have got nine out of 10. So this can also be a fun game activity for the child. Okay. 
so again in this in the in this step again i will be saying the sound and the child has to just move his fingers the child has to trace the letters okay first i will do first the teacher will do and then say the child to do it this also shows imitation which is very much important in the next step what we have to do we have to hide the original word okay so what i have done in the next step i have hide the original word and now we have to say the child to just work with your memory and write down the word from your memory on the sheet of paper and say the sounds of each letter okay so we are hiding that original word and we have to say to the child write down the word which you have traced which you have heard on the sheet of paper and tell me the sounds of each letter so when you are te uh, teaching diagrams or when you are teaching blending to the children or even if you are dealing with adolescents or higher age group and they are having any kind of disability so you can also use this method for making them read sentences how i will tell you further okay and after that in the next step what we have to say uh, we have to ask the child now compare the version of your word which you have written with pencil with the original model okay so this particular method helps self evaluation self assessment finding out the mistakes on their own now here the instructor or the teacher is not telling oh your spelling is wrong or you have not made the formation of a correctly or you have not made the d correctly the t is opposite or this letter is wrong no okay we will not say anything we will just instruct the child okay that's wonderful now if you have completed so this is the original letter this is the word which i have written now compare now just check your word what you have written and tell me if there is any mistake or tell me if you have written perfectly so here we are taking inputs of the child himself okay and then the child will compare his version with the original model of work which the teacher has written and here now what i am doing this is the step of reinforcement i was talking about though we have to give the reinforcement in each step when the child is listening and observing and when the child is speaking the word when after after i have completed writing it down when the child is doing the tracing part each step involves reinforcement but yes at the end if the child has written the sentence if the child had written the word correctly the reinforcement should be of higher level it can be verbal also and it can be visual also okay yes and what again after writing down with pencil we can encourage our children to write the same particular word using different writing tools so using different activities that you can uh, encourage paints or you can encourage sand activity just spread the sand on a flat surface and see the child with your two fingers index finger and middle finger just write down that particular word on a sand tray okay and yes you can definitely use blocks also for the same so this also helps in giving uh, helping the child to retain that particular information to retain that word reading content whatever you are doing with the children for the longer duration and yes it definitely encourages um the child to read to child to take part to take participate in reading and spelling and writing activities so this was the demonstration of this particular activity now i want you all to do it how and yes i was also telling that how can we inculcate uh, reading in this particular method let me tell you one second so yes after now what we do is like this one word we have done the hand okay with children we do couple of words like this and we start keeping when we observe that the child is performing very nicely and has retained this particular word very nicely and has understood the formation of each letter has understood the spacing between each letter matlab hamare liye when we look at this one word this is so easy to look right it's very it's h a n d a n d right but when we look according to the perspective of our children it requires so many things the formation of letter 
the spacing between two letters right the capital and the small letter letter how we have to do it and again understanding the sound of each and every letter it is it becomes a very chaotic task for our kids so for that hame is activity ko jitna zyada ho sake we have to make it interesting okay by using various activities and trust me when i was working with children in dav in my in particular school there it took around one or two months to complete one chapter with the child one chapter of only two or three pages why because it it's a really long task okay and again it also depends upon the need and upon the how the intellectual level of the child the grasping level of the child so we have to also consider all this so now what we do jaise jaise bacha ek ek word seekhta jata hai we keep on uh, placing each word in the folder okay we maintain a proper folder of each child and we keep on putting all those words in the folder and now after completing like if i have completed 10 or 15 words with the child okay later on when i'm sure that my child krishna has completed all these is aware of all these words i will take out those words and now we will frame a story using those words now it will help in story building it will develop creativity level and then we have to, we can also be ready with some flash cards with some picture cards we know that using those particular words what story can be built up right so we can be ready with the story cards also so that the child can it can help the child to prepare the story using those words so here you can inculcate um, sentence reading sentence formation using this particular method okay and now if you are dealing with a teenager okay using picking up words and giving that one month to each word would be really hectic so what you can do you can just prepare the list of words in which the child is having lots of issue like we have to understand the pattern that in which particular pattern my child is this particular child is committing mistakes okay in which word the child is not able to read in a flow in every time in which word the child is committing errors spelling errors like it can be because the big big words it can be um any word it can be like hence it can be therefore in which the child is committing mistakes regularly so understand the pattern make the list and then give it frame a sentence of those words and then inculcate this method uh, in front of the child first say the sentence and now i suggest for the sentence don't include four more than four words in a sentence okay make sure that the sentence is just of four words or five words uh, maximum not more than that okay and then first you write down the word and say the child to speak it up and then tracing and then writing part okay so i hope you all understood this procedure and if any one of you uh, is ready with materials would you like to do this activity or would you like to take part in it if you are ready with materials anyone or if you have any doubt you can definitely ask me but yes i have to also share the uses the benefits of this particular activity but yes still here if you have any doubt you can definitely feel free to ask me all tanya hi so yes. i have a question so it can be used with uh, very small children also like those who are you know uh, because they do tracing right when they are just about to start writing writing so yes uh, yes they can do the same thing like with letters yes it can be used with the small children also but again when we are working with small children the speed the flow of introducing each step will get slow okay like if i'm talking about the only the writing part and the observation phase the first phase it has to be done only in the one week okay but yes if the level of the child is really good if the child is grasping the information very fast you can definitely use three steps in a week okay thank you any other doubt
Okay, so when we talk about the uses on this particular yeah. method, yes. I have a question. Instead yes, of uh, the thread sticking, uh, because it would take time, you know, in front of a child if we are right. sticking, the child doesn't have that much of patience. Mm -hmm. So instead of uh, thread, what else can we use? Okay, so instead of thread, what you can do, you can use clay. Okay. Okay. And you can use blocks also, but yes, for that blocks, you can uh, use a cello tape too, so that the block doesn't move. Okay, or you can use Jenga also. That's really helpful. Okay, like on the letter formation, you can place Jenga in that particular shape, and but you have to stick it with the cello tape so that it doesn't move when the child is uh, closing his eyes and moving his fingers on it. Or else we can do it uh, prior the class, before starting the class. Ah, yes, you, yeah, that would be better. Yes, you can be ready with the materials before doing this with your children. And also, should we take the revision? I mean, if today we have taken, uh, suppose, two words we have taken a day. Mm. So, mm. should we take the revision in the next session? Or yes. Or coming to the session, should we go with the same phase or the same words? Or should we start off with other words? Yes. Okay. So this is something interesting, some wonderful question you have asked, that when we talk about the revision part, okay, like I have told, after uh, doing some set of words with our kids, with our children, okay, what I'm doing, I'm placing it in the folder. And later on, I'm taking out those all words. And I'm helping the, helping the child to just use those words in a story. So yes, but if you want that after five words, you want the child to revise, or even after two words, you can definitely go for it. Okay, like if I've done, if I've used two words, if I've done two words with my child, like the bat, okay, then what I can do, I can, after completing the and bat individually, I will take out those two words from the folder, all the flashcards and the work of the kid that the child has already done, writing with a pencil, writing with the paint, I will take it out in front of the child. And then I will introduce both the words together. Then I will uh, start with this method once again. Like uh, I will write it down first and the child will speak it. And then tracing part and then the writing part. And then I can also introduce a flash card, a picture card. Like for the, the bat, what can be the picture? A bat is being made on that particular picture. So this how also I can just revise all the words with my children. Thank okay. you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so let's move ahead with the uses and with the, so this is one of the easy um, words to understand this method. See, say, trace, cover, write, check. Means first the child is observing, then the child has to say, then the child has to trace the word, then the child will cover so that he could write and then later on he will do the self-evaluation. It means to check. Whatever he has written is correct or not. Okay. And yes, here we can also encourage the child to repeat the word while tracing as much as time you want to give for the tracing. Here in the entire step procedure, tracing plays a very important role. Okay. Tracing can be done in as many as steps you want to do. You can help the child. You want the child to do tracing with the help of play, go for it. You want the child to do tracing on a sheet of paper where there are dotted lines and there he has to trace that particular word, go for it. Okay, so tracing has to be given maximum number of times so that he is able to retain that word or that sentence uh, properly in his or her mind. Okay, and yes, sentence can be created in again similar fashion like if I have so many bunch of words in front of the children, and we can, I can say the ch child, okay, now you have to arrange these words in a sentence. Now if that sentence can be a meaningful and it cannot be a meaningful sentence. So it's perfectly fine. If praise the efforts of the child and then later on we have to correct the child. Okay, so uh, now this was, a, uh, this was a sentence which is not having any meaning. Let's create a sentence which, is, which has a meaning. Okay, so this is how you have to also encourage the child to create sentences using the words you have done with your child. And again, 
you can move from a uh, specific words to the isolated reading part okay so this was all about the fernand method and yes later on what we do like i told about the steps of this fernand method one second hmm okay like i have told about the steps right like first the child has to observe then the child has to speak then the child has to trace then the child has to uh, write and uh, later on he has to cover and check the word uh, as we move ahead with this particular technique we can also reduce the prompt okay now what i mean by the prompt like i was initially what do we have to do being a parent or being a teacher first you do the step for the child but later on when you get to know that a child is being habitual of this process he knows how to go with it yes. you can uh, slowly and gradually reduce your prompt it means like say your child okay now you start the activity i would like you to start begin with this particular procedure so in that first step the child will start writing the word and saying the word you don't write so this how we keep on reducing the prompt according to the level and according to the needs of our children okay yeah so now when we talk about the advantages and yes obviously every method has advantages and disadvantages so advantages is there that this method helps in understanding the learning style of a kid learning style of the child you will find out that the child is feeling more interested while writing on the sand or the child is feeling more interested when he using a color or when he using a paint or when he using a pencil or the child is more interested when i am speaking the word in a voice modulation and he is paying attention more so in each and every step focus on the behavior of the child and where if you find that the child attention is focused is decreasing it means that particular activity is not giving him interest anymore then immediately pause that activity and continue it next day but before that make sure that the previous section the previous section which has started making the child feel bored that should be interesting so that he could follow up with the next step okay so it helps in understanding learning styles and it also helps in understanding the child much more better in a better way okay you can ask the meaning of that particular word from your child you can say the child okay have you heard this word like if i say the word uh, curtain have you heard this word do you have curtains at your home they are of which color so this how we have to give that prompt so that the child feels interested okay and then disadvantages are there obviously every method has a disadvantage that it requires more effort and time and requires lots of planning as i have told you if the child is not feeling interested with a pencil now i have said now that we have to say the child to write with a pencil now how can we mold the pencil so the child feel start feels interested in writing with the pencil i can place a small smiley on my on the top of the pencil i can um, rebuild the name of my child on the pencil so that so that the child feels so wonderful oh my god my name is on the pencil it's my pencil now i will definitely write it down so it requires lots of planning yes you have to understand the need you have to understand that what the child wants and accordingly we have to put modifications in the activity okay and there are some other issue uses also some other benefits that this particular activity can be used with everyone even with adults trust me like today also when i do some sand therapy or sand play activity with my clients they feel so happy and they feel so relaxed and i even said them to write down their biography or to write down their positive moments on the sand or on the paper or trace it with me so they feel very happy and they feel very calm Okay, so it's it, it just depends upon you. Like you all are wonderful therapist or parent or a teacher. So we have to put our creativity that how we can change this particular technique, this Fernal method, according to the interest of a client or according to the interest of a participant. Okay, and it allows our client, our children, to use this 
a variety of their senses and to process the information in a wonderful way and yes it provides teachers also to use this activity to make the child feel interested and to observe to even record the attention span that yes this in this particular step my child was paying 80% attention but in this step his attention reduced to 60% it means there there is some gap so i have to work on upon that particular gap now i have uh, just listed down some activities again some uh, tools like you can which you can use for this activity like you can use clay letters you can use magnetic letters you can use sand paper that also plays wonderful like ma'am you were one of you was asking right that if we don't have time to just put a thread and stick it because it takes time to dry up so you can use sand paper for that okay and you can use letter or sound tiles you can use pipe cleaner letters or edible letters so these are wonderful uh, tools which you can definitely use so this was all about the funnel method which is one of my favorite and if you have any doubt you can definitely let me know i would love to help you all Ma'am, yes. can you uh, show the? Sorry. Yes, ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. Can you show the slide of activities once again, please? Yes, sure. You're talking about the PPT. Yes, ma'am. The activities that you were talking at the far end of the. Okay. Activity. Okay. Yes, this one. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, what is edible letters? edible letters are basically like uh, which doesn't uh, you know that which um jiska color na nikle or which is little um you know it can the surface that that particular letters are not so we talk about which are really soft and which are according um, i meant to say one second let me show it if i have it here wait it's basically safe uh when we talk about edible letters they are basically safe it does so that it doesn't harm our clients and children we are working with okay one second let me show it to you any other doubt yes ma'am ma'am what is pipe cleaner letters um this also i have to see one second actually i just use uh, limited resources among them but yes i will definitely let you know just one minute okay ma'am sure Hmm. Okay. So when we talk about the edible letters, and that is like you have heard about the cakes, right? On which we just print the names using cookies, and it can be easily eatable also, and it's really enjoyable. So we can use that also for the kids for this particular activity, which the child is enjoying, and child can eat it. Okay. So if I show you this particular picture, which which is just like a put it on the cake. so these are edible letters this is on the cake can you see here yes ma'am yeah okay so that is and it doesn't leave any sort of color in the hand and it doesn't uh, have that rough surface or something it's really soft in touch texture and when we talk about that pipe cleaner letters na it's it was pipe cleaner letters right yes ma'am yeah um how should i tell you um it's like it's like a thread which can be molded into any shape okay like if i say the child to using that pipe cleaner let us write down the um word hand okay or is 
like it's something like this thread only but yes it, it can't be molded into any shape if i will mold this thread it will get open right but that pipe cleaner letters pipe cleaner thread if i mold it into this particular shape for making the dot of is i letter in is it will remain like this only okay so that is okay, thank you right any other doubts and you can definitely try out this activity with your children and do share your experience with me that did they enjoy this or not and how effective was it Okay, somebody is asking down in the chat box. One minute. Ah, uh, what are wiki sticks? Okay, can we use John Pepper of four floor clay? Yes, you can use that also. To score the kid. No, ma'am, there is uh, not any scoring chart or something because this method, this technique is universal and it can be used as a free flow also. and it can be used with all the children so there is not any scoring table or something but yes we can design our own okay like if we are if i want to focus on the reading if my criteria of doing this activity is focusing on the reading spelling writing and their attention span so this is how i can make my own checklist for this particular activity okay wiki sticks Yes, one second. I tell you about wiki sticks also. Wait. Wiki sticks are also just like threads only. Okay. These terms, like all this, uh, the terms and these um, tools which we are talking about, they are mostly used outside India and this particular terminology. But yes, they are just same like uh, threads only, which just uh, keep their shape, particular shape, and we don't have to, uh, you know, they are in that one particular shape only. If I will just turn the wiki stick, wiki stick into a circle, it will remain circle only. It will not get open. Okay. Yes. Yes. Purple pole. Any doubts, anyone? Yeah, ma'am. In the chance. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, uh, when it comes to blending, many kids, you know, uh, face difficulty while blending. So, mm -hmm. is there any technique? Because uh, when it comes to a particular sound, they are fine with it. But when it comes to mm -hmm. blending, they find it difficult. It takes a lot of practice, I guess. Mm -hmm. But is there any technique uh, to make them uh, blend easily? If you could suggest any, many kids, you know, uh, do blending very easy. Mm. One of the kids with me find it very difficult uh, joining the, you know, combining all the sounds together and forming a word. Mm. So, is there any technique? Okay, so for the blending again, first uh, we have to understand that why why the child is not able to pick up the blending part. okay then work upon the his previous knowledge first it might be possible that in his previous knowledge like when we talk about the blending before we uh, work upon the cvc words right so there might be some gap between understanding the cvc and we have we have started doing blending so there might be some gap that the child is not able to cover up with the blending part okay because when we talk about blending like if i say black Okay, blur. That is a different sound, and ack is different sound. So first, I have to make sure that the child should be aware of the sound of blur first. Okay, then I have to move further with the ack, and then slowly and gradually, when I will find that yes, the child is clear with blur, then I will start introducing more words with blur, more like black, 
blunder or it can be blow okay so first understand what's the gap what's the uh, why the child is not able to pick up the blending part okay and if you're using all the techniques and strategies for teaching that cvc correctly and if the child is picking up the cvc words very correctly then first in the session revise the cvc words and then slowly and gradually move to the blending part and when you're talking about the techniques use as much as multi sensory approaches you can for the blending part okay and allow the child to make words which even don't have a meaning like if i say uh, the sh okay the sh sound which is combined using s and h okay it might be possible the child is not able to pick up because he is right now confused between s s s sound of s and h okay so first we will first clarify that then we will move on to the sh sound and then i will just allow the child to make as many as words with sh it might not be having any meaning then move on to the meaning of full words okay okay even if the simpler uh, words you know like mm -hmm. cat rat mat uh, for mm -hmm. example sounds are very much clear like uh, okay. a t but when it comes to blending combining all the sounds she fails there so i actually don't understand uh, what's the problem so, even the simpler words are uh, difficult for her to uh, blend you know sounds are very okay. much clear. she's very good in sounds okay blending uh, mm. she's unable to blend and we come up with a complete word that okay so again for this i would like to suggest you you speak as much as you can in front of the child first okay like uh, and just say him to repeat after you like if and um like what i use is like if i place three i have three flash cards of different three letters like if i talk about the word bob okay b o b bob and i'm placing it they are standing alone and then i will say them you know now all these three friends are meeting together so for meeting together we have to call out the words we have to join these letter together and say out the one word and they all three said together bob so you can change it into a story form that the three letters meeting together having fun having a party and they shouted out the word bob this is how you can introduce it okay into okay. some story form thank you so much yes and if the child compares his activity and finds out there is some mistake yes for this particular thing if there is a mistake and if we found yes the child has not written it correctly we will say the child it's all right yeah we can going to we will start it again with the new word so don't use that word again but yes we are going to use a similar word to it like if i have used three letter word and here there the child committed the mistake at the end part at the end of the activity i will introduce three letter word only but it would be a different word okay and then after that word i will come back to the first word in which he committed the mistake okay so this oh. how the chain goes on okay what is the age group of child it can it again uh, when we talk about the preschool we can start this activity with preschool children and yes it can be used even for adults even if you are dealing with adults that i have already told you have to just mold the activity according to the interest a uh, bag uh, can we use in a group yes we can use that in a group also that's wonderful students enjoy doing it in a group so it won't uh, lower their uh, motivation or uh, self esteem like if someone is able to do it in a group okay so for that group part again if the child is having if, uh, if you're dealing with normal students if you're dealing with general category students then it can be good for group but again you can uh, divide the responsibility that one child will trace and the other will write other will trace it with the other will um, say the word other will check the word like this so divide the responsibility of each and every step to each and every child 
okay and then later on they can just switch on the role switch on the responsibilities okay thank you okay so should we end up with the session ma'am yes tanya i guess the audience uh, had their questions all answered and thank you so much again on behalf of team emojar and the audience to stay with us for so long yes ma'am <laughs> that was My a pleasure. wonderful session thank, thank you. you so much tanya thank, thank you ma'am ma such a Have good day everyone thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you thank you, you ma'am we'll post the recording on our youtube channel so uh, kindly subscribe to it and we are coming up with a lot more free uh, workshops yes ma'am and the certificate links uh, will also be uh, posted on our youtube channel so you can get, go and check at the end of the day today uh, within an hour it will be uploaded ma'am thank you so much bye good night take care all of you thank you ma'am thank you so much bye good night thank you so much ma'am good night